Hi, so today on our walk and talk we are going to be talking about how to get a dog friendly garden. Um, I am very fortunate I live in the countryside and have quite a large garden um, but uh, yeah there's a few important things you have to know about even if it's a large garden or a small garden to make sure that it's friendly for your dog, safe for your dog and to make sure that your dog will enjoy the garden with you because they're our best friends. Hello Fleet! So here she is. <laughs> so yeah, this is today's walk and talk. Um, yeah, so let's go. So the most important thing is that your dog is safe. So you want to make sure that you've got a fence. You can see this fence here. Um, around your garden especially if you've uh you know if you're next to a road which you might be able to hear the road noise here um yeah so if you've rescued a dog they the rescue centers might say that you need a six foot fence to be super you know super safe i'm about six foot so that would mean this is this is what's called sheep netting um but yeah i think you'd need if you rescue a dog you need them to be about six foot not really needed in my opinion uh, because, well, Fleet's a big job, a dog, she jumps. She's never jumped this, you know, it's up to my hips. It must be over a metre high, but it's not six foot. And I'm, wor I'm working here in metres and feet, aren't I? Um, metric and Imperial, I'm sorry, everybody. But you know what I mean? And if you're from the UK, you will also know what I mean because you probably do the same yourself. So, so yeah, fences is the first thing to make sure that your dog's safe. <clears throat> now, secondly, while we're on the, the case for safety is to avoid chemicals. And I even avoid slug pellets, even if they're organic. And the reason is Fleet could eat the slug. I mean, I don't think she will, but you know, she could eat something that's touched the slug pellet or maybe something has eaten the slug and fleet goes sniffing around it if it dies because obviously once a slug pellet's in a slug if a bird eats a slug then the bird's gonna die because that chemical goes into their tummy it's just not very nice for the wildlife or for fleet um i don't really know what's in organic slug pellets or you know pet friendly slug pellets but for me it's a no i'm just not interested in using slug pellets Obviously this isn't a garden video, but <laughs> I love gardening. If you wanted to, for instance, you know, give the slugs something else to do, you, you know, you could use beer traps for slugs. You could, um, you could, well, what I do is I have juicy greens next to my plants. So slugs go for the greens first. That's what I do. I don't, I don't really, don't really bother share and share alike they say if a slug has eaten one of your plants that it's a really healthy plant so eat eat, eat the plants with slug holes in you don't have to and i've diverted again haven't i but i just love this subject so we're walking along here i'll just show you what fleet's up to hey fleet do you want to show one of your holes so fleet likes digging holes and I let her dig holes in certain areas. Here's one. Here, look. Here's a hole. What's this? Fleet. Do you want to have a go? So I'm encouraging. What's this? What's this? Find it. Find it. Find it, girl. Find it. So I encourage her to dig holes in a place that doesn't really matter to me. She's not really in a digging mood, but the reason that you give her a hole to dig or a space to dig is that she can satisfy that need um, dogs especially certain certain breeds um, they love to dig you know like the terrier types um, you know because they're bred to to go underground really so yeah letting them dig letting them have a hole to dig will then stop them from wanting to dig up the areas that you don't want them to dig like the lawn for instance if you have a lawn um, <laughs> so yeah I know it sounds a bit backwards but yeah making sure that fleet has somewhere to dig is a really really good idea because you know the garden's hers too fleet actually should know fleet off 
good girl. She should know that this bit of wilderness here, strawberries have just overtaken my whole bed. Um, she should know that she shouldn't be there. And like this as well, it's the broad beans. I've tr kind of trained her, but you know, you could protect, this is to protect these really, and also to, to help them grow. So protecting your plants is always a good idea if you want to grow plants which are a little bit more, a little bit less robust. But if you want to grow things and you can't be bothered to put, you know, or don't, I don't have the resources to put up fences everywhere or, you know, don't have the time to put, put those type of blocks up, you can just choose robust plants. So here we've got an apple tree that's robust. By the time they're like, you know, three or four years old, they're pretty robust. But yeah, herbs, look at these woody herbs here. So this is a sage. Smells amazing. And this is rosemary. This is absolutely huge. This is just great. Look at that. So good for you, rosemary. It really is. You can have this on potatoes. You can just put it in everything. And it's absolutely amazing. I did hear somewhere that it promotes hair growth as well. I need to look into the benefits to dogs. But um, yeah, at the moment you could use rosemary, for instance, as a flavor enhancer for your dog's food. I don't know if Fleet's into rosemary. Fleet, what's this? Come here, come here. She's like, leave me alone. Come here, Fleet. Do you like that smell? Hmm? Mm. Nah, rosemary's not for her. She loves parsley. But you know, every dog's different. So anyway, these kind of woody herbs, they obviously provide food, they provide um, birds with various flowers, after it's flowered and loads of areas for the birds to hide. But also this, this won't be bothered by your dog. I mean, look at it, it's just a woody shrub. Now, if you're growing vegetables and things like that, other ideas for robust plants are artichokes. And I'll come and show you what an artichoke looks like because they are the most delicious things to have. But not just that, is you can use the foliage in floristry. So say if you grow a bit a few flowers, you can use this lovely silver, silvery, um, this for instance. Oh, it's gorgeous. And they're so easy. You just bang them in. You bang them in. And just let them grow and <laughs> they are not bothered by dogs yeah all these blueberries here trees things like that so yeah growing uh, shrubs and trees which you know are really robust is a really good thing to do in a dog friendly garden this is one of fleet's favorite spots have a look in there girl come on what's in here this is an area that she loves to kind of like dig and play and sniff and i just let this be wild you can hear the birds i'm just gonna let you hear the birds i do apologize about the road noise she absolutely loves this if you've got a small garden, you could plant grasses. Now grasses are really, really easy to maintain and they just provide that extra bit of stimulation for your dog. So your dog can go outside and like sniff in the middle of the grasses or, you know, feel the way the grasses are on their, on their fur. I know this is really sounding quite, you know, oh, airy fairy, but really, it really does matter for them. Imagine being a dog and being inside all the time. And when you do go outside, all you've got is a square of grass, of short grass, with no smells, no plants, no shrubs, nothing to do. Um, so it's really, really important, especially if you don't walk your dog two, three times a day, you should at least twice. But if you don't have the time to once or twice and you just have them in the garden for 30 minutes or whatever, then yeah, just, just creating that area for them to smell. I mean, she's just, she's smelling all the time here. It's brilliant. 
other things to make sure that you've got secure so you've got making sure that areas where there could be dangerous things for dogs so say if you've got um, the shears or something like that in your shed make sure it's nicely closed similarly with the polytunnel or greenhouse just anywhere that you've got just make sure there's no kind of like sharp objects hanging around that means that your dog and children and anybody else you know will remain safe so as well as the garden being secure make sure that areas with dangerous bits are secure what's she up to she's just heard a plane go past i think so yeah fleet shouldn't really be on here but look she's sniffing in between those artichokes she loves sniffing what you found girl yeah She's going to be thinking about all these smells all the time. I like to leave things like logs lying about like this. You know, there's all sorts of smells in there. Look in those logs. Even if you're a tidy gardener, you can still have a messy area like this for your dogs to have a sniff in. Now, there are some plants that are really, really toxic to dogs. Uh, to name a few, there are some of the lily, lily of the valley types, which are also poisonous to humans as well. So it's probably best to avoid having any type of poisonous plant in your garden if you've got a dog. Foxgloves are another, you know, those really tall, they're beautiful. They've got like bell shaped flowers hanging off them. They're absolutely gorgeous. Those are toxic. So yeah, you need to make sure that you've done your research and had a, you know, a look to make sure that the plants that you're planting aren't toxic to dogs. Now, another thing that's really important, if you compost things, then you need to be making sure that that compost bin is really secure and that your dog doesn't go eating anything out of it. I actually know of a dog, of a close friend who passed away because this happened. So I can't remember what, what he ate. Um, I think it might have been avocado or something like that. But not the avocado, um, not, the, not the meaty bit, the, uh, the actual skin. Or was it hops? It might have been hops. Anyway, absolutely devastating. Absolutely devastating. And yeah, just be be very, very careful. If you're, you know, obviously I'm a gardener and I love compost and making your own compost is the best way that you can, you know, feed your garden back and feed yourself through using your own organic waste, right? but make sure that it's completely secure and that your dog can't go in there. So important. Similarly, as you see here, I use, um, so what I do is I cover a piece of ground, cover a piece of ground. I don't do strimming or anything like that. And then I put uh, like some wood chips on top at the moment is what here. So this will all rot down and eventually this will be good enough to to plant in at the moment these are quite um what, what would you say fresh they haven't put it down so it's too much there's going to be too much nitrogen in this to plant um annuals or anything like that so anyway my point is watch what mulch you use because if any of the, your, your mulch has got cocoa qua in it then that's also going to be you know have the same negative effect I realise it's probably better if you talk it to my face. It's going to have the same negative effect and poison that feeding your dog chocolate has. So the cocoa qua, I think that's how you say it, um, has got the same toxins that chocolate has in it. So you need to make sure that you're not using that as a mulch. So I think that's mainly it to make sure that your your your, gar your dog's your garden is a dog friendly garden. You need to make sure that it's safe. So we're talking about making sure that the garden has got a gate, a fence and a gate all around, making sure that the compost bin's secure, 
the tools are secure in the sheds and things like that making sure that any dangerous plants are completely away or out she's having a tug on a nettle root <laughs> um, making sure that also you're not exposing your dog to anything like the coco craw or um, anything that you know might harm them if they ate it and then as well just as important making sure that your garden's stimulating having a digging area having a sniffing area using grasses and bushes and things for your you know maybe logs for your dogs to have a little sniff in so it's the best way really for your dog to you know basically have better mental health through sniffing because you'll you'll see a difference in them they'll you know sleep well at night and just dream and just go oh yeah i remember all those sniffs they will absolutely love it so that's about it that's it for the garden what i'm going to do is i'm going to just post here um yeah just try and watch the next video because i do really want to encourage everybody to grow food for their dogs this is a garden i haven't really talked about growing food for dogs but yes you can grow food for dogs and it's so cheaply but here's a video anyway watch that next around how to grow food for dogs it's dead easy dead simple you don't need a lot of space but for now hug your dog have a great time lots of love from me and fleet fleet let's say bye say bye she's like no bye <laughs>